This video was made possible thanks to the support of our amazing, attractive, and all-round admirable patrons. You guys are truly awesome. Hello and welcome to another EDH Deck Tech brought to you by Affinity for Commander. My name is Alex and today we're going to be looking at the most pushed white commander since... Uh, let me see here. Shram? Yeah, let's go with Shram. Anywho, let's get right into it. My time will come when every soul will bask in my glory and obey my law. Heliod's Sun Crown is a legendary enchantment creature god for two generic mana and one white. He is a 5 5 with indestructible and reads As long as your devotion to white is less than 5, Heliod isn't a creature. And whenever you gain life, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And, and, for one generic and one white mana, another creature gains lifelink until the end of turn. So let's break these abilities down. The first line of text is pretty standard for all Theros gods, but his cheap mana cost is something I can't overstate. The power Heliod gives to your board is insane for three mana. And with mono white suffering from a lack of ramp, having such a cheap costed commander is just one of the many things that makes Heliod so strong. His next ability is a static effect that rewards you with buffed creatures for gaining life. Something to note is that the ability triggers on each instance of gaining life, not the amount you are gaining. So casting a massive Heliod's Intervention, choosing the second mode, will still only put one counter on a creature or enchantment. In a unique bit of wording, Heliod can provide power to enchantments, like himself for when your devotion isn't quite up to his standards. This means that going in for the kill with a swole Heliod via commander damage can be a very viable means for this deck to win a game. And finally, Heliod's last ability is a nice little touch of, here you go, Mr. Sun Titan, you deserve some lifelink too. A great way to keep the life gain train going when the table has decided they've had enough of your soul sister's rudeness which transitions us nicely into the meat of the deck. So let's get the obvious ones out of the way first. Heliod wants as many instances of gaining life as possible, so Soul's Attendant and Soul Warden are immediate includes. We'll also be needing the Soul Sister's estranged cousin that the family doesn't talk about anymore, Suture Priest. And let's not forget the wild auntie of the family, Irak Champion. And how could we leave out the first Soul Mister himself, Daxos, Blessed by the Sun. Having any combination of this incredibly dysfunctional family out will see us gaining boatloads of life with every rotation of the table, and Heliod buffing our creatures an insane amount because of it. Now we need cards to fully take advantage of these counters and life gain. Ajani's Pride Mate is still a solid powerhouse of a card, now able to get additional counters from Heliod to make him the swollest kitty in all of the land. We also have cards like Archangel of Thune to buff our entire board and Crested Sunmare to grow our board present with indestructible equines. Speaking of growing our board, Resplendent Archangel can generate some fantastic flying blockers for us. Now she is admittedly harder to utilize than the mare due to the need to gain five life in a turn, but if we can manage it, the angels are 100% worth it. Now, gaining life is all well and good, but the plus one plus one counters that Healer provides are where the real power of this deck lies. Even if we don't have an Ajani's Pride Mate or Sun Titan out to smack face, then these counters can still be placed on one of our Soul Sister cards. And trust me, you haven't lived until you've clocked someone with a 9-9 Soul Warden. But there are several cards that we can use to help utilize these counters further. Abzan Falconer granting all our buffed creatures flying means not only will our creatures not get flown over by any pesky dragons or sphinxes, but we can also avoid most of our opponent's creatures when attacking. Abzan Battle Priest giving our creatures life link means that our opponents will have to really think carefully about combat. Whenever one of your creatures blocks or is blocked, they will gain you life and also buff your creatures further if Heliod is about. And why not buff your creatures before they are dealt damage with the first strike provided by Inok Bondkin? Honestly, love these guys. 
White plus one plus one counter synergies can also be found outside of the Khan's block. Sen's Tacticianer is a great piece of tech at one mana to help block any and all incoming threats. With any combination of these guys out, your opponents will start to feel like they're playing against some degenerate Slither deck. Asking themselves which one's giving them first strike and lifelink, wait, how do they all have flying again? Delightful, confusion, and powerful cards, all coming from mono white, no less. Well, let's get this out of the way while we're still in the creature section. Heliod does nicely infinite combo with both Walking Ballista and Triskelion. Through his means of granting Ardo these artifact creatures life link, you can move a counter from one of them to deal a damage to an opponent, which will gain you a life, allowing you to put a counter back on the creature. Simply repeat this until all of your opponents have been eliminated by the awesome power of Mono White. Not the most fun interaction I'll grant you, but we did ask for a competitive Mono White commander and here we are. Maybe next time one that has the words draw a card on it wizards, please? For me? Anyway, moving on to the rest of the deck. White's means of ramps are just terrible. It is a truth, universally acknowledged, just like how a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. But there are still cards that we can use to help us, if only a little bit. Knight of the White Orchid, Core Cartographer, and Boreas Charger are the ones everyone knows about, and for good reason. They have the all-important line of text put onto the battlefield printed on them. Oresco's Explorer, Weathered Wayfarer, Land Tax, and Gift of Estates are also useful for acquiring lands from our library. However, they are only put into our hands, not onto the battlefield. Now, never missing a land drop won't get you ahead, but will keep you on curve, and in Mono White, that's a victory in of itself. Without any type of Cultivate or Kodama's Reach effects to rely on, we'll have to turn to our artifact friends to grant us the mana we need to cast all the lovely spells in our hand. Pearl Medallion gives us a static cost reducing effect, and Pristine Talisman provides ramp and more instances of life gain. But let's not forget our trusty mana rocks. Thought Vessel, Thran Dynamo, Hedron Archive, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, I could go on. The amount of ramp needed will depend on how high you want your curve to be. If you want to be casting a Maria Shepherd and a fat white Sun Zenith, then you'll need loads of ramp. If you're going for more of a low to the ground version of this deck, then maybe skimp on the Dynamo and Archives. But one piece of artifact ramp that I must suggest you put in every Heliod deck is the Altar of the Pantheon. It is, quite frankly, perfection. Ramp increasing devotion to help put Heliod online and life gain at a moment's notice to give you an additional plus one plus one counter. What more could you want from a three mana artifact? Now onto the card draw for Mono White. Yeah, okay, that's fair. But with Heliod, anything is possible, even running cards like Etched Oracle and Mindless Automaton. Both cards that on their own are a bit, well, bad. But these cards can serve as great targets for our plus one plus one counters. Later in the game, they can draw us quite frankly a ridiculous amount of cards. Then we have the slightly less efficient Dawn of Hope. But it is creature generation as well, and is certainly not a terrible card. Endless Atlas can also serve as a solid means of drawing an additional card per each of our turns, provided we have the mana spare. And Well of Lost Dreams can be one of the best late game saving grace cards, allowing us to pay mana to draw each time we gain life. We will of course be gaining lots of life with our extended family out, and we'll have the mana to spare, and drawing a huge number of cards is one of the best feelings in Mono White. And for when casting our white weenies, Mentor of the Meek can help replace each of those cards in our hand for the low, low price of one generic mana. And finally, we have Survival Cash. What? Don't look at me like that. It has the words draw a card on it in mono white. Realistically, this card says gain four life and draw two cards for three mana. That's the best we're getting in mono white. No divination for us, but this will most certainly do. 
especially since it gives two instances of gaining life for more Heliod triggers. The support for this deck mainly focuses around solving some of White's problems as a colour in EDH. A catcher's monument grants us creature cost reduction and helps grow our board state. Blind Obedience slows down more aggressive styles of deck to give Heliod a chance to do his thing. Plus, the Extort is a great means of gaining more life. Darkstill Mutation and Oblivion Ring are fantastic means of getting rid of any problematic creatures or permanents, whilst also adding to our devotion. Dusk and Dawn is also one of my favourite board wipes for this deck. Early game before our counters start flying, this card can act as a one-sided board wipe, but the second part is a great means to grab back all our small creatures to re-establish our life gain engine. For even more annoying life gain, we can slip it into some delightful one mana enchantments in Authority of the Consoles and Ajani's Welcome. Both gain us life when creatures enter, but the Authority pulls in overtime by having all your opponent's creatures enter the battlefield tapped. Overall, Heliod is one of, if not the, most powerful mono-white commanders. His counter-placing ability, depending on the instances of gaining life, helps him easily slide into already established white gain life strategies. But by adding power to your board state and synergizing with plus one plus one counter theme cards, he helps support the deck well into the late game. With the addition of multiple infinite combos that are tutorable in mono white and rather difficult to interact with, given all the protection spells in mono white, Heliod is definitely one of the best standout commanders for me in recent years. And that is it for our deck tech on Heliod's Sun Crowned. What other cards do you think could be used to abuse our white god's ability? Or are there other more broken white cards that I've missed? Whatever your thoughts, be sure to leave them in the comments below. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and check out our Patreon and Twitter pages. Links are in the description. And as always, we'll see you next time.